a very, very common phrase. I got wrecked. So hi everyone, if you're new to the channel, make sure you've subscribed, hit that bell button, leave a like, and obviously a comment. Now, we're gonna talk about this phrase, this I got wrecked. We're gonna go over, basically, I've got, as you know, my little sticky notes. The six things here that in my opinion are kind of the perfect six in terms of what you should be looking for as a new investor. We're gonna go mainly on the investment side of it here. So the basics really, but there's some stuff on here that you're probably not aware of and may not actually happen for a while yet in terms of one of these elements. Very, very important though. But basically it's shitcoin season. At the minute, if you look online, you're just gonna see safe moon everywhere. You're gonna go, what else is it? If you put in safe, you got safe Mars, you got all kinds, but look at the losses. Huge, huge losses, right? So this is strictly, in my opinion, gambling, right? It is. It's kind of like the stock market for penny stocks in a way that you, you see all these zombie companies kind of propped up and they're nothing, but they're like the pop up and down, up and down, up and down, right? So you can see loads. So there's obviously Safe Moon, there's Safe Coin, there's Safe BTC, I believe. Loads of them, right? They're all down in mega, 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 mega losses, right? They are crazy. So we're going to talk about the fundamentals of investing, right? Simple, simple stuff, right? And I mentioned it on a tweet the other day, right? If you follow me on Twitter, make sure you do. I like to have a rant. I do apologize. It's my nature. I like to take things seriously as well. And the one thing that I said in this tweet was, if you're in cryptocurrency because it's all green, it's all big, beautiful green candles and everyone's making money, the chances are you're going to get wrecked and the chances are you're in here for the wrong reason. Now, this brings me to number one. The reasons of why you're here is always going to be a factor. It doesn't matter what. It's kind of like zero one, you know, or point zero one or whatever, like before the, the number one. Why are you here? There's always something like that. Like, why why today? Why tomorrow? Why yesterday? Are you now invested in cryptocurrency where you got all these other vehicle investment asset classes that are out there? Much more regulatory sort of elements to it. But why are you in crypto? You need to answer that question first. But the first one, number one, number one, the obvious one is research. Understand why you're here, what money is, why you want to buy that coin. Now, research is obviously just subjective subject. People like certain things in a coin. I do. I like to look at use case, team, and most importantly, branding. Sounds daft, but within that, you've got use case. What does it do? Is it going to change the world? Is it going to be something that you can rely on in the future? Maybe. Who knows? Number two, the team. What is a team like? What sort of superstars are in there? Experience. What is the team relationship like with the community? Are they vocal? You don't want to be in a Telegram group where they're banning everyone because they're asking questions. You want to be engaged in their team. And the obvious one, branding. Branding and marketing. What does it look like? Is it good? Does it have a nice website? It sounds daft saying that. But would you invest in something that has a real, real substandard website? Probably not. So... They're just some of the things. There's obviously other things to look at. Obviously, tokenomics. How many bag holders are they? As in, the team, the developments hold a lot of tokens, all kinds of stuff. You've got to live and breathe it. The one thing that I always say in my research, if you can go onto a website or a coin and within 10 seconds know where it is, the chances are you're probably going to find a lot more information that you want to find. So let's just look at Polkadot as an example here. You go into CoinGecko and you've got all this information. All the explorers, the wallet that you can use, the community, the source, source code, essentially the GitHub. But the main thing you want to look at is the website. Within 10 seconds, can you figure out off one glance what it is? And you can. Basically, it's a very, very simple platform, security, scalability, and innovation. And then when you scroll down a little bit, you've got all the information there. It's literally interoperability, the scalability, the blockchain innovation, forkless future-proof, security, and user-driven network governance. Scrolling down even more, you've got the governance stake and bonding. The dot, the dot token, what is a token for dot? As you can click on here, it will tell you exactly what the dot is. 
very very simple you know you don't have to kick the ass out of it but the information is there at the top you've got a light paper and a white paper simple right read them figure them out the next thing to look at is exposure how much money this is the one that breaks people now the problem is i'm in a position where i am financially free in crypto it's look look at the draw it's time in the market it's the way i've conducted myself over a period of years now as a new person do not get offended when you look at tweets when you look at people on reddit making loads of money it will enhance that in a greed and we'll talk about that in a bit but exposure is key it's not a marathon it's not a sprint it's probably slower than a marathon it is life it is a life skill that you've got for life investing slow it's as you go so when you talk about marathon pace it's probably smaller than that if there is anything lower than that if if, if you remember the story of the you know the, the the hair and the tortoise essentially it is before that in my opinion because you don't want to do it over a period of years you want to do it over your life essentially investing you're building Imagine life as a game of Monopoly, in my opinion. It's just a life game. So, exposure is key to risk. Don't be jumping in on rubbish coins. Don't be jumping in with money you can't afford to lose. And don't be jumping on trading if you don't understand it, because you'll lose money. You want to always grow. Do good research. Put money you can afford to lose in. But most importantly, be comfortable. If you know when the market's going to do basically this and dump, We'll talk about emotions in a minute. It gets very, very interesting because people who are inexperienced will be selling these candles, but not knowing that these are support levels. Important thing to mention. So the next bit, number three, entry. Now we're talking about emotions now. The next one is emotion, but before that it's entry. You want to get in first, don't you? So you want to have the research done. You want to have the exposure mapped out on a piece of paper and how much you know what you're going to put in. But then the entry, it's that patience, that waiting for something to happen. And let's look at BNB as an example here. Yeah? I put a tweet out about this. I did a video not too long ago. Now, if you do a simple Fibonacci, now, by the way, links below, there's a free course. I do paid courses, a CPD credited. Check them out. That is a level of interest, 382. It's very, very common in crypto. So is a 618. And you can see here how, yeah, it's coming down. It's like, oh. People want to buy at any point. It's just We call it aping in, just jumping in, diving in, whatever, right? And people do it. People buy high and expect it to go higher. Sometimes it doesn't work out. If it doesn't work out, you've got this to deal with. Now, I've already showed you before Safe Moon and stuff, but even BNB, top asset, top exchange, did a 33% drop. How would you feel if you put $5,000 in and you're not quite comfortable in this market and you just lost 33%? Yes, it's horrible. It's a horrible feeling. Happens quite a lot in crypto, which is why this title is very, very obvious. I got wrecked. And if you sell, yes, you've got wrecked because you've sold at a loss. 33% is a big, big drop in the ocean if you're new to the space. But as you can see here, it's obviously it's bounced back. Buy supports, sell resistance. That is a top tip. And that is one tip that I gave not too long ago to someone who's taking it as gospel and it is working very, very nicely for them at the end of the day. So when we're talking now entry, you want to buy when it's low. Sounds really obvious. It's kind of harder than it looks as well. It's like, you know, a certain thing in life. It looks easy, but it's not. It's like riding a bike blindfolded, essentially. So you do not know what's going to happen in the future, but what you do know is minimizing risk. And we're talking about emotion here. Emotion is very, very important. We all have inner greed. We all have inner fear. When you're losing 33%, you're like, oh, you're looking at your portfolio like, oh my God. You do, you, you sink a little bit. But on days like this where it's bounced back, you're like, oh, it's not too bad. It's all right. I bought the dip, essentially. Now, we're going to talk about, obviously, emotion a little bit because it's important. It's going to make you do silly things in the market. You can't help it. I do apologize. It's just one of those things. It's just, you just can't get away from it, right? So when you are looking for support, you need to be patient. People will be telling you on Twitter or in your direct messages or whatever, your friends, family, I bought it, I bought it, I bought it. But you're waiting for that little dipping point. Now you look at Bitcoin as well. You can see here on the daily time frame, people will be buying these tops, they dump. It goes back up. It dumps. Chances are probably going to go back up at some point. 
But we all know that with Bitcoin because of the way the fundamentals are. But you got to remember, there's people that be buying down here thinking they're amazing. But we're going to look at number six in a minute as to why this is important. you got to remember there's one thing only to worry about, profit or loss, right? If you're in profit, and this is number five, you're going to get that emotion where do I take profit or do I not? Chances are in certain assets, I like to accumulate Bitcoin, so I don't really take much profit in it. I like to build it up as, as I go with altcoins. But when we talk about emotion, which is number four, you've got profit and loss. The profit and loss is always the worst thing. Do I take profit when do I? I always take profit. I always take little bits off the table because it, it removes my risk. It also makes me grow further, which is one of those things. I know for a fact people will be selling and panic selling at these levels. I've seen it all the time. Loads of Twitter handles, they always get ridiculed whenever, you know, they announce that they sold it and then they sell literally on at support levels. And it's funny. But that is just human emotion. It just happens. At the end of the day, if you're willing to take a loss, go for it. Because cutting your losses early is always important, which is why number six is probably the most important thing is position. There's times and a place when and when not to basically buy into altcoins or buy into Bitcoin. It's bull and bear markets, it's cycles. You could be buying, and this is very, very fictional, by the way. This could be the top. We don't know if it is or it's not. I think it's unlikely to be the top, but it could be. Let's just imagine it is. And you wanting to buy Bitcoin here. You buy Bitcoin here, you buy Bitcoin here. It always dies. Oh, it's just, not so much dies, but you know what I mean. It goes down. And let's just say, for example, theoretical value goes all the way down to, say, 20K. And you've been buying, do, 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 all the way down. Dollar cost averaging. But you feel horrendous because every single buy order you've done is in a negative, a huge negative. So there's time and a place to buy. To know this, you go to the total chart. The total two chart or the total chart of the entire industry. If this is trending down, you don't want to put new capital and you want to just wait out and chill, which is always important to know. So when you start getting to the point of where is it going to go, obviously Bitcoin is dragging this down. If you go to the total two chart, it's a bit more healthy. That's just including the altcoins. I prefer using the altcoin version. So when you talk about position, there's a time and a place to buy and there's a time and a place when not to buy. You can buy the dips on the serious dumps, but don't just keep adding cash when it's high because you know if it is going to go into a different cycle and the prices are going to come down and everything's starting to tail off and the hype's died off, you want to try and save as much capital as you can into some sort of stable currency. Make that work for you and then buy in when it is lower than what you probably perceive it to be in the future. You just got to wait and chill out, which is why patience is important. But if we're going to recap, you've got research to do. You then got to figure out your exposure, which is number two. Number three is obviously your entry points. Entry is important. So you need to know one, if you go under number six and with entry, it's important. Is it the right time to enter the market? Yes or no? What's your entry going to be? Are you going to buy at certain supports? Go for it. Make sure you're patient. Number four is obviously emotion, handling that inner greed and that inner fear. Essentially, the greed of not taking profit, the greed of FOMOing in. And you've got the fear of the dumps, knowing that there is support levels there, knowing that you've bought at the right point so you are protected. And then number five, you've obviously got the obvious, taking profit or maybe cutting something that you may feel and I've done it before in multiple projects. If something's changed and fundamentals have changed, boom, get rid of it. No emotion. You don't want to get attached to them. You don't want to get married to a coin. It gets really ugly if you do. And then obviously six, it goes in with the entry point, essentially. Why? Because you don't want to be buying in a bear market, let's be honest, when it's at the top of it. When you're at the top of a bull market and it's kind of going into a bear market, right? Stick with me. You don't want to keep buying as it drops. I've done that in the past. It's horrible. I did it. It's disgusting, right? You want to buy at the bottom of the bear market, the low, low, low price where people have given up. When people, and there's absolute blood and carnage, you want to be buying those low prices. That is how you do it. But that is only relevant when, I, as I say, we're in a bear market. In a bull market, buy the dips, buy the blood. And that position is important. So I hope this kind of helps with some obvious levels, right? Obvious things. So there's your six. In my, that's what I go by. <sighs> Seems to work for me. And position is very, very important, in my opinion. Knowing when to be in altcoins, knowing when to be in Bitcoin, knowing when not to be in anything, essentially, it's important to know because you want to protect yourself at all times. Mm -hmm.